Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome to more oxygen not included in the super duper group er base. In between videos, I picked up another dupe. We've got Methos. Why? Because Methos started off with, again, that exosuit wearing skill, which means eight extra athletics. So Methos is going to make for a very good logistics person for me, again, delivering resources back and forth, maybe doing a bit of tidying along the way. So once again, a Discord admin ends up becoming one of my janitors. I love it. In the last video, we tried building out a geothermal power plant, and for the most part it worked, but it's not quite perfect. I did a little bit of testing in a separate save file, and I am incorrect when last video I said we're going to try replacing these steam turbines with steel to see if they will get any better. That did not work. And the reason why is it's not so much the steam turbines like casing and chassis is overheating. It's more that it can't simply cool off the water enough, like it's trying to cool the water into a condensed form, but then it picks up heat so quickly that it turns back into steam, so it has to shut off and it doesn't pump the excess water out. So it's working, but very intermittently, as you can see here. That's not what we want. There is a solution to this, and you can kind of see the ghost of it right now. We need to set up some active cooling, a heat exchanger that's going to pull heat out of the hydrogen room and toss it into the steam room. It's going to go through a set of radiant pipes here, which is going to draw heat away from the steam turbines and into the water here. Then it's going to travel down some insulated pipes into this area where we will have installed a thermo aqua tuner, right? And that thermo aqua tuner is going to take whatever goes into it and drop it by about 14 degrees Celsius before pumping it out, again through insulated pipes so we don't pick up any extra energy. And then why is it going through this pool? The reason I'm doing that is to help equalize the temperature. I don't want to accidentally find myself in a situation where I am uh, rapidly chilling this down from, you know, 90 degrees Celsius or whatever down to 70, 60, 50, 40. Oh crap, it's too cold! So what we're doing with this is just equalizing the temperature, right? It's going to come through here, and then rather than come in too cold, it's going to have a chance to kind of use this like a heat sink, like a heat battery, and just kind of equalizes everything out. This whole thing will slowly cool down, but if my math is correct, it's going to chill very slowly. This is going to be a mostly self-sustained system that I don't have to come back to and check periodically to make sure it's still working. In the meantime, my dupes are very, very busy. We are trying to build out a whole load of conductive wires all the way up to the base because I need to share this incredible power gain with this whole base over here. It just takes a lot of infrastructure to get it working. Let's go ahead and make sure Methos has the improved... What's this? Oh... You know, I never even realized we could do this. Extra athletics and also slow the durability damage for exosuits. That's kind of nice. Huh. Is this relatively new? Anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do some improved carrying on this guy. Of course, we're going to go ahead and give him the hat because that's always going to be important for us. Now, one thing I am concerned about is our morale, right? We're not looking absolutely fantastic on this. Some characters are doing really, really well on morale, but we're getting a little bit close. We have all these points that I'm otherwise just not able to spend, and that makes me sad. Especially since apparently I can get some extra athletics over here, and this would make a lot of sense to get. So, we're going to need some extra morale. Um, there's a few ways we can do that. We could set up some rec rooms and some extra activities for entertainment to make people happier in general. Not the worst idea. I'm not going to say it's a very high priority, but it can be kind of fun. People do like having things like arcade cabinets and so on. Yeah, there you go. Something like this, or a jukebox, or a sauna, or... A wind tunnel. If you got enough power, you can just let people fly around and they get super happy. We might consider doing some of that. Another really good option, though, would be to improve our food. And as we've been growing our population, we're still pretty sustainable on our food. But, like, this is something we need to keep an eye on. I can't just keep tossing more and more dupes into the base without having some improved infrastructure. So something we need to do, then, probably this video, is go ahead and set up a new set of farms. Some way of getting some additional food, preferably as automated as possible. And I think what I want to try experimenting with, maybe I succeed in this and maybe I don't, but what I want to try experimenting with is going to be a sleet wheat farm. This is notorious for being perhaps one of the most annoying types of farms out there, but what you'll do is you grow the sleet wheat that normally grows in an ice biome, and with enough of this, you can start creating some really nice breads. It could be frost buns, it could be pinch of pepper breads, it could be whatever. Uh, I like the idea of this. Or, or we could take a bunch of that, plus our berries, and start creating something called berry sludge, which sounds disgusting, but apparently these people like it better than the gristle berries I've been giving them. So this would be a pretty easy way for me to get some extra morale, which lets me get more skill points, and it's going to solve a need that I'm anticipating is going to become a problem in the next, eh, you know, a couple hundred cycles. 
Oh, something I need to do. Uh, I need to make sure that the Thermo Aqua Tuner is built out of steel, which for some reason it's acting like I can't do. Oh, I don't have enough steel. Dang it. Yeah, you need 1,200 for this dang thing. All right, we'll make some more steel, but this thing uh, definitely is at risk of overheating all the time. So definitely don't make a Thermo Aqua Tuner out of the wrong material. That's just a recipe for disaster. There are other things we can do to solve some of our immediate food issues. One thing we could do, and this is kind of sad and awful, but it works. Uh, you take some of the surplus eggs, if you happen to have a few, and then you just sort of drop them in a pool of water. And they're still going to incubate, and then that baby hatches, and then it drowns, and you get food. Yep. Nope. It's, it's, it's exactly as awful as it sounds. It's factory farming in the worst possible form, but um, <laughs> it gets me food, and it's functional, so I'm not above it. Do I mind the idea of having an extra digger? Mm, no, actually. I mean, if we're going to be committing to making some extra food and taking on more people, more digging is still not a bad thing. Okay, who am I going to name this guy? It's going to be Anime Death. Alrighty, we have a dedicated digger added in. Boom, boom. Still not quite what I was looking for, but you know what? I'm never sad to see it. I do have to be careful, though. If I continue expanding the base out too much, or rather the population of the base too much, um, food isn't going to be the only concern. It could be also oxygen generation. It could even be using the potty. Which would mean I need to build a second bathroom, and more oxygen, and so on. I mean, not that we can't do these things. It's just, that's, uh, that's a lot of pain. It's not just food, so let's keep an eye out for that. Okay, we finally have enough steel that I was able to build the dang thing. Holy crud, that took way longer than it should have. Uh, let's go ahead and... Well, actually, wait a minute. Um, first off, this can't be here, because that's going to ruin everything. So let's get rid of that nonsense. Uh, we need to probably set up some bridges to force this to go only one direction, at least temporarily. So let's do something kind of like this. I guess, want to make sure that the uh, liquid is going to flow in the direction I intend it to, though this bridge should already accomplish that. And then we can start pumping some of this polluted water through and see if this actually does solve our problem. I'm pretty sure it will. Okay, polluted water is going in now. And once it gets the aqua tuner, it'll be fine. What kind of temperature are we looking at right now? Well, first off, it's coming in at about 67, and it's already picking up. About 13 degrees Celsius by the time it exits this. It'll equalize a little bit over time, but notice that the water is now at about, it says about 83 degrees-ish, maybe 80 degrees Celsius. It's gonna go through the aqua tuner, which apparently is now also stuck because it's confused about this whole thing. Actually, the problem I'm having is a lack of power. Oh, right, <laughs> right, of course. This, um, this power transformer can only handle, uh, 1,000 joules, and if you don't know, a watt is a joule per second, which means this thing really can only handle 1,000 watts, and we need 1,200. Yeah, okay, that means this thing has to actually build up its own internal battery, then immediately expend it. We need to replace this with a larger power transformer! Ha-ha! And you know what? I'm glad I checked that, because I didn't even realize I built my last transformer out of steel. Oh, good lord, what a waste of 200 kilograms. Okay, now we're able to produce 4,000 watts. That should be enough to keep this sucker running at all times, am I right? Oh, there we go, much better. So this is now set up. Let's take a quick look-see. The water is coming in at about 40 degrees right now. That's because it's equalizing with the temperature we dropped down over here. So we're actually rapidly cooling this down. I didn't mean to go quite that cold. Uh, okay, let's see, coming in at, let's say, 57, coming out 37. Oh yeah, this is gonna get really cold really fast, actually. Okay, so we're drawing quite a lot of heat out of this arrangement, and may I please point out... Oh look! Steam turbines that are running pretty much at all times now! Hey! Yep, all we needed was an active cooling loop, and now the geothermal generator is up and a running. And of course it only gets better once we get in here and attach some of these micro circuits, which we're doing right about now. Yeah, look at these microchips go. So this 850 watts, we already know, is about to jump up to, what was it, like 1,200, 1,300 watts, something around that line. There we go, 1,275. I was close. Yep, so now we're producing even more power than before. Oh, I love it. I love it. And we could have actually fit a fourth generator over here and still been fine. Of course, now this thing's in the way, but yeah, whatever, it's fine. We could place these all over the bottom if I wanted to. It doesn't matter. We're set, man. We are set. Okay. I feel proud of this because this is something I pretty much designed on my own. I didn't try to copy someone else's design. 
I just went for an idea, learned the mechanics, and just kind of built it. And it seems to work really, really well. It is unfortunate that this is even necessary to draw away my power. There might have been a better way to tweak this so that these things weren't going to have issues in the first place. But nonetheless, I'm happy with it. Okay, with a huge amount of extra power, we turn our attention over here to the Sleet Wheat Farm that I am starting to build out. Because, uh, yeah, we now need to very, very much cool this area off. Sleet Wheat is the special product that grows in an ice biome. If we take a look at this sucker, body temperature, blah, blah, blah. Let's just take a look at the actual database. This should be a little bit easier to work with. So it prefers anywhere between negative 55 and 5 degrees Celsius. That's pretty darn cold. That's really dang cold. Um, we could still theoretically use polluted water to be a coolant to actually cool down a room over here. And it would probably work to some degree. However, it would be a fairly delicate balance because you don't want the water to freeze. What might be a better option actually would be to use something like salt water, which I don't know if that even has enough. Let's see, what's its freeze point? Minus 22. Yeah, salt water brine would work pretty well. Um, alternatively, what do we got as far as like oil or petroleum? Uh, petroleum... I don't know if this stuff's capable of turning into ice. Excellent. That's great. No solidifying petroleum. Okay. So you could use this. Now, it doesn't have as good of a specific heat capacity as the polluted water does. That's the big downside. If you want to get the most value out of a thermal aqu uh, aqua tuner, as far as the numbers of DTUs deleted from a source of water, you want the highest specific heat capacity possible. Super coolant is the best. Polluted water is a, I think, either second or third best. I don't think salt water is any better. Salt water is about the same, actually, at 4.1, so that's a thing. But yeah, you really would like to use something like water or polluted water because polluted water has a freezing point of minus 20. If we're careful, I think we can use this. What I'm going to do then is using the same principles that we've learned down over here and our excess power, we're going to create a steam turbine and aqua tuner setup that's going to rapidly chill a massive box of water. And then we're going to use that to cool down the air in this region until it gets down to really, really, really cold temperatures. Then we're going to just start growing a whole load of sleet wheat. I need a lot of this stuff. Sleet wheat usually takes something like, what, 72 days to grow if it's in the wild, I think? Whereas it only takes like 14 days to grow if it's in a farm tile. So we could use the farm tiles... We could also use hydroponics, but again, keep in mind, you could end up with some really, really, really cold water that bursts its pipes if you're not careful. So for now, I'm going to use this and just use up some of our excess amounts of dirt in order to grow sleet wheat, and then hopefully, we can automate that with the auto sweeper system. Now, the auto sweepers, if I plan this correctly, should be able to reach everything that I'm currently placing, plus a small overlap. My hope here is I can set up some receptacles and loaders to drop off some dirt to automatically get sent to all these farms and to automatically pick up all of the wheat that gets placed so that we, uh, or sorry, that drops from the plant so that we can easily send it back up to the base. I only want people to come down here if they're going to actually use their farmer's touch to boost up the food. And even then, I'm not sure it's worth the trip all the way down here. I want to automate this as much as possible so I can have a steady supply of food without needing a lot of extra labor. So maybe what we build can actually be exactly this compact. I mean, it doesn't have to be very big exactly. Um, all I need is a steam turbine like right here and maybe just one aqua tuner. I could toss in a second, but like why? It's if as long as the insulation works the way it's supposed to, any heat generated here will eventually turn into steam. And all we care about is heat deletion, not necessarily creating a lot of power. And frankly, using two aqua tuners is still going to end up taking way more power, even if it does generate more heat than this thing can handle. So I'm trying to find the balance where I don't have to supply an absurd amount of power into this system, though truth be told, I'm probably going to have to anyway while also trying to retain any little bit of extra out of this steam turbine as I can. Ooh, another cook. Hmm. Um, I mean, if we are going to house a larger population, having a second cook would be nice. Um, we've kind of only had one person this entire time. Yeah, I don't know if I trust a cook with shriveled taste buds, if I'm honest, um, but I think this could be a good option for us. Unless... Is machinery skill actually required here? I don't remember. 
It's not operation skill, machine skill. That might include such things as the microbe musher, because that is a machine technically, is it not? Let's see, maybe? I think this is probably okay. I think that the other jobs are considered to be cooking jobs, not operating skill, and that's all this really is, right? But I think I'm willing to give this one a shot. All right, here's hoping this isn't a mistake. Welcome aboard, Electro. Oh, Lordy, hope this isn't a mistake. All right, enjoy your new hat. You're like my assistant cook at this point. <laughs> Oh, bad burrito. You've been keeping this base afloat for so long, but at long last you get some help. Holy crud, we've got a lot of hydrogen building up in the base. What the heck? Actually, I think it's because we're out of algae. Yeah, I am completely out of algae. Wow, we finally hit that stage of the game, huh? Okay. Uh, I mean, it's gonna happen eventually. So, um, right, let's go ahead and mine a little bit out. Just kind of keep us afloat. That might be the sign that we will need to get some additional electrolyzers up and a running. So let's think a little bit about how this is actually going to work because two chambers will take a very, very long time to cool with only one aqua tuner, but I'm not gonna say it's impossible. Do we think we could get away with just having one quick run of radiant pipes, let's say close to where the sleet wheat is? Maybe. Um, yeah, I kind of I think I think I kind of like that idea. So, let's set up some radiant pipes like this and like this. Then insulated pipes from here. And assuming it's going to run probably something around like this just to get around the uh steam turbine once that's set. And it'll be kind of like this, I think. Yeah. I think this is what we're going to go for. Um this will eventually work. It really will. As long as the temperature in these two chambers is basically not allowed to change, thanks to the insulation, which you know, it should be fine. It's not ceramic insulation, but it should be good enough. This will eventually work. It's just with this large of a space, it's gonna take some time. Not to mention, we already know that radiant liquid pipes are not exactly the best going through uh, gases. Oh, I did want to set this up as my little extra liquid chamber down here, though, because uh, there will come a point, I want to do this basic thing right here, there will come a point where this whole room is cold and kind of like a refrigerator, we don't really need it to get any colder, but we want to keep this sucker running because I can have other uses for this. For example, if I were to have a very, very cold chamber of water right over here, I could also run, let's say, some uh, ventilation uh, pipes, radiant ventilating pipes through here, and that way we could also start cooling off a lot of gases for various different parts of the base. For the record, by the way, this is not in any way a compact system I'm putting together. There are definitely better designs out there that actually have, like, this exact chamber built into the side over here, and it's a lot better. I'm kind of splitting these up just because uh, until I get more practice with these, It'll be a little bit easier to have them split apart so I can easily diagnose them one step at a time and keep an eye on it. That's the only reason I'm doing that. Otherwise, yeah, just go ahead and build it, like, right here. Oh, for God's sake. In fact, now I'm kind of thinking I should just do that. Ugh, fine. There, we'll do something kind of like this. You happy? Gosh, the things you guys totally make me do. Okay, so now we're gonna start siphoning off some of our excess polluted water all the way down over here. We'll fill this up. It should have all the piping it needs. Do need to get these things built up, of course, before the water spills out because that would be embarrassing. We've got a full hydrogen tank over here and then I would just need to dump in a some amount of water. I don't know if there's a particular optimal amount in this case if it's just one aqua tuner. Um, but it shouldn't really matter too much. At the end of the day, it's all gonna get sucked up and then just dumped right back out. Eh, I mean, eh, whatever I've got here, you know, 350 kilograms or so by the time it's done, that's probably pretty good, right? Yeah, okay. So, what are we waiting on at this point? We've got a lot of power, so that's all set. So, I think the only thing we need to do now is just kind of kickstart this system so it actually goes anywhere. And the easiest way I know how to do that is just to extract like one or two pipes. Do that real quick, and there's a little bit of a gap, and it's like, Oh, we are liquid, and we shall rush forward to fill the vacuum. 
Oh, we are liquid behind the liquid rushing to fill the vacuum, and a new vacuum has been created. We shall also move forward, and then... And it just keeps doing that ad infinitum. But I like that, actually. Exactly like that. That was exactly what I wanted to see. See? Look at them go charging! Haha! -ha! Oh, you know what? Actually, something I forgot to do is I want to measure the temperature of the water as it is going into this thing to make sure that we do not accidentally overchill this nonsense. So, if it gets to a certain point, like, Hey, maybe don't make it colder? You know what I mean? What the heck? Pokemon Baka, how did you get into this room without an exosuit? And why? No wonder you're scalding yourself to death, Pokemon Baka, and why aren't you using the transport tube to get out? Wait, no, really, what are you actually doing? Hold on, Jesus! this is a great way to get yourself killed. I don't understand how you did this, I really don't. Holy crud, what is wrong with you? All right, so with that all going, that's kind of that right there. So the temperature's already dropped down to 16 and still going down. We're down to eight over here now. Yeah, every full loop, we're gonna see this going down further and further and further. And I've got a bunch of temp shift plates over here as well. So we should be able to rapidly drop the temperature, especially in the area around where the sleet wheat is going to go. This chamber will end up being warmer than this one, but that's okay. So we should go ahead and start planting some sleet wheat then, right? Yep, I don't see why not. Let's go ahead and copy settings and start the planting. Here we go. This thing right here will be a pretty good gauge for what the overall temperature is going to look like inside of these uh, areas. Yeah, we're down to 8 here. It was 16 not long ago. This is dropping really, really fast for sure. Down to 15 over there, 14 over there, 12. Yeah, down to 2. Okay, okay. And how are we looking as far as the temperature of this water? It is not quite ready to get to boiling, but it's getting closer, 87 degrees or so. Temperature of the water is getting close to 100 degrees Celsius. The vaporization point it said was 99.4. There we go! <laughs> Steam, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and once it gets up to 125, it'll get sucked up, and then we can start that cycle. Temperature-wise, this is still dropping really rapidly. If anything, I'm a little bit concerned I might have overdone this. This might be, uh, this might be too powerful and start actually creating more problems than it solves. We'll find out though, we'll find out. I did get a lot of these uh, conveyor belts set up, so now we can start requesting certain things. This is going to pick up sleet wheat, and it is going to deliver it all the way up over me. Hang on, where's the shipping thing? All the way up over here, and just basically plop it right in front of the grill. That's it, it's gonna plop it right, right there. That's great. Over here, we wanna pick up dirt. Is it cultivatable soil? Yes. Can I like set a maximum amount of this to be used? Manually lose these storage materials. No, I don't want that. Um, no, it looks like we just have to shove a load of dirt. Wow, that was a lot of dirt, okay. Yeah, and the dirt is on its way, okay. If anything, that might be way more dirt than I need. Hold on, is there a way to like limit this a little bit? Maybe a conveyor shutoff or a meter? Eh, when a specified amount has passed through it. Yeah, maybe that's what I want. I haven't used these before, but that might be it. The reason I want to do this is because I don't really see the point in sending, like, literally several tons of dirt down here just sitting on the rails, inaccessible. That doesn't do me a lot of good. So, let's say once... I don't know, what's a unit in this case? That's not a proper unit of measure. Let's say 80 units. Alright, once 80 units have gone through... Just stop. Now it says that the limit has been reached. Okay, hang on. Is a, is a limit a kilogram? Is that what the unit is? 20, 20, 20. Yes, it is. All right, now we know what a unit is. Why doesn't it just say kilograms then? Well, before we mess with it further, I'm curious if it's smart enough to look all the way down the line and see once it's been picked up by our auto sweepers, is it going to say, hey, some of those units are gone and open things back up? Mmm... No, or it's just sitting here waiting. Do we still have it sitting here? This is the conveyor receptacle, receptacle. This has 40 kilograms of dirt, this has nothing. Okay, maybe I have no idea how these work. It lets 80 through, but then what turns it back on? So if I set up a quick timer sensor and set this to a specified amount of time, it'll send a little green blip, reset it down to zero, and then it'll count out 80 more. 
I think that's how you're supposed to use those just based on what I am seeing. So the question then becomes, how much dirt do we use per cycle? Five kilograms. Okay. And how many of these plants do I currently have? I see eight, that's 16, so 32. And 32 times five is 160, so I'm actually kind of close. We need 160 kilograms of dirt per cycle. And let's see, um, in oxygen not included, I think it's a total of 600 seconds in a cycle, because it's 10 minutes, right? So let's say I make this 599 and this one. And what should happen is every cycle you have a one second blip where it sends a green signal over here. If this works, then I'm gonna feel pretty good about this and I'll be happy to start using a lot more automation. Holy crud! I can't believe this freaking worked. I mean, I guess I shouldn't. I should believe it worked. I mean, it all made sense in theory, but it's so cool to see a theory come together. Oh, even better, you can see the auto sweepers are picking up and delivering dirt. This is like almost as automated as I can make it. If I didn't want to have farm stations here, I probably could just leave this. As long as you have dirt to input into the system, it will, well, and, and a little bit of power. So dirt and like maybe 400 watts of power. That's enough to make this work. Hey, look, it's sending more dirt down. It's sending more dirt down. Hang on, did it reset the timer? Hang on. Yes, it did! It worked! Everything worked exactly as planned! My god! <laughs> These are the moments you live for in Oxygen Not Included, I kid you not. Oh, don't you even bother delivering dirt over here, Mr. Tweeter. I appreciate the enthusiasm, but like, we literally have machine- Dang it! J. Johns! Pokemon Bok- What are you all doing? Okay, well, anyway, so with all of this now done, I think it's time to rework a bit of this area. What's in this ration box? A load of wheat? Okay. Um, we need to get a... What was it called? Microbe musher over here because we wanted to start making some of the berry sludge to see if that's gonna tide us over as a new food source. Of course, people will be sad to see their omelets go away, but you know, that's gonna have to be okay, at least for the little bit. A, a gas range. That is actually also something we should consider getting at some point. If we wanna pump some natural gas up this way. Anyway, so what would we be saying? Right, micro musher. Let's go ahead and place that down over here. You know, there's actually also a spice grinder Produces low quality food using common ingredients. No, that's that. That spice grinder adds benefits of food prepared at skilled cooking stations. Wait a minute. We don't exactly have like a real true kitchen still over here, do we? Oh, maybe we should fix that. So did that work? Yep, okay, now we got a kitchen, which enables the spice grinder use. Right, cool. Ooh, what are these things? Freshener spices. Take seeds and turn it into things, also salt. Ooh, slow the rate of food decomposition, provide a boost to piloting abilities? Wait, we get our pilots high on spice? The spice must flow, yo. Strengthens even the weakest of muscles. Ooh, you need water, weed, seed, and iron for that. And then blossom, sleet, and slime. Operating skills go up, huh? All right, anyway, micro musher, hi. Berry sludge, this is the stuff we want. This takes bristle berries and sleet wheat grain. Five units of that, plus the bristle berries. That turns into 4,000 kilocalories, and it is of good quality, which is better than the plus one we've been having so far from the gristle berries, which is poor. So this is now what I want. So what I'll probably do for consumables up over this of a is say you guys are no longer allowed to eat Bristle berries, and actually, I'd rather you all stop making gristle berries for now. Continue frying up the mushrooms. That's all great. But, like, save the berries, and let's start making some berry sludge. Okay, but Alpha, why are you doing this? Let me guess. Let me guess. I was right. This is an operator job, ain't it? Hang on. Let's check. Oh, it says it's cooking. Alpha, you're not a cook. Wait a minute. Are you? Now you dang well better not be. I'm gonna set you down to absolutely disallowed. Don't, don't use that. In fact, most of you guys don't use this. I don't care how bored you are. We've got skilled cooks for a reason. Y'all want food poisoning? Cause this is how you get food poisoning. There we go, Electro. That's what I wanted. Ooh, it looks like a Christmas fruit cake. You know, with those disgusting little wax fruit things in it that I'm pretty sure aren't real fruits. Um, okay, wonderful. I think we actually accomplished everything that I set out to do here. We've got a new source of food 
presumably a better source of food. When people start eating this, they're going to uh, have higher happiness. Morale going up means their special abilities activate more often, and it means we can start applying more of these skill points, which is gonna be great. By the way, Electro, let's go ahead and make you a proper chef. You graduate, congratulations. The geothermal generator is working better than ever. It's applying a whole load of power. This thing is still active, by the way. What's the temperature in here? It is definitely cooling down. We're down to 3.5 degrees here. So whether I like it or not, we have actually created a little bit of a chill box here. Which we have to keep an eye on because this actually could at some point get to be too cold and become a liability and start freezing, which we really, really do not want for obvious reasons. So I might need to ease off on some of the insulation and kind of let a little bit of power, uh, a little bit of stuff trickle in here. I don't know. For some reason, we actually are using up all of our power still faster than I'm able to do anything with it. Uh oh. Wait a minute, we're actually still using up too much of our power? Are you kidding me? Oh, that just makes me sad. Well, it's fine. This is why you've got chill boxes and stuff. So you can set up like petroleum power plants down here too and still be able to cool down the whole system. I don't know, we've got options. Oh, we've almost finally finished off this giant oil pool, by the way. And I've got way more petroleum than I know what to do with. Also, hooray. All right, well, anyway, this is a good place for us to end this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you did enjoy. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell. And I will see you guys next time.